<laughs> you never know, would you? Yeah, make, nice one, mate. Yes, yeah, my dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, mate. Yeah. How are you, mate? Okay, yeah, nice to meet you, too. Mark. Mark, hi, mate. How are you, man? Come on, have some fun. That's right. Yeah, man, have some fun. We'll take the fun, like, and we'll walk into the gym. Yeah, we'll walk into the gym, man. I'll take the fun, we'll fucking do Yeah, man. Just the gym, then, mate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like the banister. <laughs> Man, yeah, show us, yeah. Nice. Hello well, guys and welcome back to Paul Bentley's Combat Hour. And next to me I've got more than a <laughs> carry on. I've got more than a friend. Yeah, man. Sean Masha Dodd. Let me just explain a few things about uh, me and Sean before we get into the series thing. I don't think I'll be making this one cry for a start. Because well, it's more of a comedian thing with Sean, I mean. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. You can't take you've got to, you got to laugh and be happy in life, haven't simply you? simply can't take you seriously at all, can we? Especially if you're working with me. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As you know, me and Sean were together on, on uh, Radio City with uh, Steve Hoddersall's show. Oh, so, what was uh, it? Hoddersall, yeah. Hall, yeah. Hoddersall. Hall. And John. <laughs> John. <laughs> Who's John? John, the teacher fella. No, his name's not John, that's the headmaster. Yeah, that's it. Jonathan. Jonathan. The head. Yeah, head yeah, yeah. Soul, soul. It works. <laughs> it works. Anyway, it works. So we're going to find out a little bit about Sean today. Probably stuff that you didn't know. Hopefully stuff that you didn't know. We'll see how, how far we can... Uh... <laughs> oh, so far we don't know. <laughs> see how deep we can get with you. Yeah. So find out what we sell. First things first, we're trying to get into you rather than just your, your boxing career. And I've looked up a few things. I know... I know stuff about you and then and, and, um, it's funny really because you've always been a bit of a joker haven't you? you've always been a comedian yeah since you were a young lad um, your sister mm. Stacy yeah how is she she's good and you've got kids yeah <laughs> I told the big men in that <laughs> free that I know of <laughs> <laughs> what are the names mean um, Derry Mason and Brody Derry Mason and Brody yeah was you a Derry Matthews fan Um. no no like, apparently I've heard that I didn't get a choice, you know what I mean? I didn't get a choice in any of the names. <laughs> That's exactly. Yeah, That's I did. Exactly. So, uh, but apparently Daddy and it, you know, it's like, because we were sort of made this come, but I was like, if I had the choice, of what I, I wouldn't have said Daddy. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know. What's his nickname? What's that nickname? Uh, Little Masha. Little Masha. Yeah. Is yeah. this the one that carries the belt? No, bro, that's my youngest, that. Bro, he carries the belt. Yeah. And he's the one who's claimed the green belt, is it? Um, no, his was the common one. <laughs> Tommy Pearl coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's well, our is anyway, yeah. <laughs> our Brody's coming for him. We're going to get back into Tommy Pearl. We're going to talk about that later. We've got a lot to share about that. Mm. But first, we want to talk about your amateur career. How did you get involved in boxing? Why did you get involved in boxing? What was your up to? Because you were a mischievous little bastard, wasn't you? Mm. Tell the truth. Um, there's not much out there for us is the other than sport nowadays you know and especially combat sport and stuff like that takes you off the street puts you on the street and that I've done it first thing first don't mate Masha why why what why, why, why did we call you Masha I took the name from <coughs> my, my dad his name's Masha he, he, he's big Masha um, and I was his first born and um obviously being a lad and all his mates and he, I think he was about 20 when I was born or 19, 20 so uh, as soon as I was born his mates were like you know Little, little Masha so I just took on you've done the same on with Daddy yeah so I just took on his name then and just grew up as as Masha all, all my life your your amateur career how would you have, how would you have put your amateur career successfully a blur. <laughs> it was a blur. I didn't even understand boxing. <clears throat> yeah. Didn't even know the ABAs that I was get going into. Didn't even know. Didn't knew nothing. Do you know what I mean? I just knew that it was just making me feel better about myself, um, helping me med like medically, and mentally. It was doing me good. So I was just training, told them fighting, fight. Um, and I was doing well but I didn't really take too much into it I was just enjoying it the reason you went into boxing you know why I mean was it was, it, was there a violent streak um, I, a little <coughs> bit like I was 
I was making enemies than making friends, you know, as you know. Yeah, I'm yeah. a nice person, I'm a, go- I'm a happy-go-lucky person. I like to have a laugh and a joke. But I was living up to that masher, you know, that yeah, name yeah, with yeah. people. And, uh, yeah, I was just, um, I was always fighting, always fighting. Is there a big expectation of a masher? Was your dad a bit of a battle, was he? Yeah, he was. he's only, like, little like me, but he could fight, you know what I mean? And when I, when I ended up having to, like, you know, go go down London out the way and work a little bit and just sort of try to sort my head out. And when I met some of his mates down London, you know, they were all big fellas, you know, you know, working and like doing the steel work and that and the pile. And, but me and my dad were only little, but they were like, oh, he's, he's dead wiry yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't back down or, you know, say no to no one and he gets just get stuck in, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, What's happening? I, I do you know what mate? Me I set me me watch <coughs> at ten past five, all my watches at ten past five, the time mm-hmm. again that died. Was it? <laughs> yeah. So all my watches ten past five, mate. Forever? Yeah. I'm thinking I can work. Oh, no, I'm I'm I can push that in and then it'll go. Oh no shit. Do you know what? I've done that. Ten past six now. So it's not so fast. I must have knocked that. I'm gonna put my watch on an hour ago. The only watch you've got is set at ten past five. Ten past five, yeah. What do people need to know the time? I've got my phone, haven't you? But you know what I'm like, mate. Yeah, time yeah. is not an essence to me. Oh god, I know. You know what I mean? I don't. So it took me four days. You worry about time, mate. You are worrying about things in life you don't want to be worrying about. No, mate. It took me four days to get hold of you. And do you know that mashes marbles one seven two. Funnily enough, who's that? Mad. Yeah, who's that? It was your fucking team. You didn't turn up. What for? The match on the weekend. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's just... a lot to answer for, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a lot, mate. <coughs> uh, don't remind me. We, we won. I don't mind you all week. We won, didn't we? Yeah, we won, no. thanks. You've done well. Yeah, right? I went out Friday, though. We spoke on the Thursday. Yeah, and then I went out Friday because I forgot it was my ma's birthday and our Stacey's. <laughs> we had a meal booked. When we went out and me, I went out for a drink, then we were on karaoke all night. I was killing on karaoke. What do you think? Um, oh, uh, what? Neil Diamond. Which one? Sweet Caroline. Come on. Um, uh, Come on. Go. Oh, sing. Sweet uh, What is it? Uh, What's the start? <laughs> What's the words? I can't get the start, words up start, there. Start from the beginning, come on. Um, I don't really think the words. Is that Rocky Fields? Was it? Was it? Song? Who? Rocky Fields. I don't, I might have been, but match room player before each main event. Do you? Mm. It is done, yeah, because I remember that. I'm sure, I'm sure one of them had it. Didn't, do you remember we had the charity fight with Connor? Was that on then? Yeah. Yeah, that was it, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's Rocky yeah. Field, that's why he chose it, because he Co- loves Rocky Field. Yeah. Ah, he he right. chose to walk out to that, didn't he? Oh, bless him, yeah. yeah fair play. Oh, right. I love that song, mate, but I sing it well. It's a couple cool. of other songs in there. I need I need the words up or I need a bevy or something. <laughs> and, then, and then you won't get me off the mic. <laughs> you've, got a, you've got some uh, supplementation for P&I. Well, that gets you drunk. Uh, How is it going to be? Probably. Yeah. Oh, you're method in his madness, isn't it? Tell uh, me about, I need to, I want to know about your first amateur fight. We'll do, a, we'll do a night out yeah. and you'll watch me sing on karaoke, mate. Okay. We'll get some videos. All right, we'll go out. And we'll video it. Yeah, it's sick. Wait for us to video it. Um, okay. So, first, first amateur fight. Oh, mate, it's frightening. Um, Do you remember who it was? Yeah, it was? Ronnie and Amma Casey. I don't remember that, because you had many amateur fights, did you have? You had loads. 19. Is that what you were? 19 in two years. So it was fast. Yeah, that's what I mean. It was a blur. Um, and, and I went in, and I done, and I won two ABA titles, the novices, class A's and class B's, at two different weights, consecutive. And your first pro fight was with Andy Townsend? No, that was me. That was your first that loss. That was your first loss, that. Yeah. First, like, ten round, I think, four rounds. You were on an eight-win streak. Yeah. Your first loss was Andy Townend. Yeah. I remember. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I know why you lost. Why? Because it didn't win. No, no. You give me your video and I'll tell you why. You had to play Longsdale boots on your own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still got them in ass. I'm still got them in ass. I've like got bananas now, yeah. I've got everything, mate. Every pair of boots, shorts, <laughs> hand wraps. He's supposed to bring us a gift, you know, for the wall. Am I? Yeah. I'll be, all my wraps. 
Um, I'd say give us a watch, but none of them work. <laughs> no, they do work. They do work. They do work, mate. But I just set them at that time for some some reason. Um, it's strange actually, because when I watched you. When we, we were watching you, uh, loads of things, you know what I mean. Cautious, wasn't you? And he had a good job, and you were yeah. cautious behind it, and then you you were throwing really looping left hooks, and it just wasn't you. But I suppose that's the progressive. No, thing, with the tan end fight, I was like, I was busy, like I was only fighting like four rounders, and like you know, for four rounds you can just you know four, you can just go 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 go. Yeah. So when I in that fight, I learned that fight when to put my foot on the pedal and when to take it off. So I was like six rounds. I was just f- f- was just flat on the pedal. I was just yeah. going, 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 going. Um, he spat his gun me out twice in was one he round. Was he down as well, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, so I nearly had the mad. I think it was in the fourth round. One more time, he would have got disqualified because I was just relentless. You know what I mean? And he was like thinking, "What?" Well, he couldn't keep me off him. And then I think he got to the sixth round. Um, no, no seventh. Six round or something, a load of crowd trouble happened, and then the fight got stopped for about three, eight minutes or something like that. That's crazy. And then with the edited though on YouTube, so the fight got stopped for like eight minutes. It's actually got a story about it though. Yeah, yeah, story yeah. About it, yeah. So he's in his corner, just re- resting, breathing, just taking it all in, relaxing. I'm in my corner, stressing. Saying, wow, what are you doing? I'm just nearly had them hard. I've got him. I felt like getting hurt or tired, and I was on him. And I'm stressing to them, saying, you know, tell them to calm down. I'm thinking it was my lot, but it weren't our lot. I know my the lads. They won't back down, or they won't, you know, yeah. take any. can swear on me or not like that. They won't take no shit, man. Yeah, uh, but they're not one to start anything. They just, you know what I mean? They, they'll just go there. They watch the fight. They be loud. But they won't be disrespectful or nothing. Yeah. Found out afterwards that it wasn't them as well, and as well uh, I hoped it wasn't. It was the other lot. It was a load of ho- hooligans that were given free tickets on the day <coughs> after um, Doncaster played at home, and Steffi Bull went round the pubs in, in in Doncaster and gave free tickets away to all the football hooligans and said, "Your man's fighting today because I'd sold hundreds, and ah, they knew yeah, that yeah. they were going to be out out." you know, shouted, you know, in atmosphere wise. Um, so all these football hooligans come and they were all sitting on tables. I sold like six tables. My tables were dotted right in all four corners of the of the event. My man was like in that far corner. Yeah. People just in that far corner all spread well, well away from each other. And then everyone was like all put in the far corner. And these hooligans were all on the tables right ringside. And they they were like you know giving it all that to all the, all the lads provoking them all, um, and then when it sort of when it, when it got a bit rowdy the fight got stopped. He's chilling. I'm stressing, saying you know, and Danny Kelly sitting me down, going just calm down, chill out, take a breather. But I'm not thinking you know I'm thinking tell them to to calm down and we can get on with it. <clears throat> By the time when the belt when we, we we were to go 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 get on with it. I just went straight back out. Yeah. So we had them rested. So I've been on it, been on them for six rounds. Didn't rest in the corner. Went back out for the seventh round. Still going for him. You know what I mean? And he was just moving, just just waiting. And then, um, and then he just, I was, I gassed out them. It's a shame, really. It's, it's, it's a crap way to have your first professional loss. Isn't I it? just tired, mate. I had nothing left. I just basically, I just, I was drained. And then he just, he was the KO kid. He's, he, he, he knocked out nearly every opponent anyway. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And um, and he couldn't keep me off when I was when I was all right. But when I gassed, I was tired. He didn't even knock me out. You know what I mean? He gave me a couple of good shots. Um, I got into the ropes, and the referee just stopped. The referee could see I was, I was tired. physically, you know, tired. That was yeah. done, and he just stopped the fight because obviously before he did knock me out. You know, you have got some good names on your resume, though, mate. I mean, so after after that fight, there was two wins with Liam Richards and Gary Butler. Yeah, and yeah. then. A really big lad, you drew with Scott Carroll. Yeah, Scott Carroll. <laughs> you know, okay. He's a good lad, he's got. He's all right. No, every fighter is, aren't he? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, right. no, most. I can tell you this: you got chased, I just won't. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. Um, Scott Carroll, he's not a bad lad to draw to. He's not a big. He's yeah. not a big name, and and and. Um, and I was up four rounds on the cards as well. Yeah. Going into that last round, do you, Do you know? think you won that? Yeah, I was winning it easy. I was winning, but again. 
you know, the tan end was like the, the first, you know. The strategy was a little bit wrong at the end, don't you think? Yeah, I, um, again, I'd never like, done, gone past seven rounds, you know, you know yeah. that Liam Richardson fight was only a six rounder. Then it was, sorry, yeah, and then I was saying to a ten round with Gary Buckland, but that was just like, that was my golden ticket. That yeah. was perform and you're there. And then yeah. with Cardo, I was just like, I was fighting with the British. I was just excited, you know what I mean? I was just like, yeah, he that's happening. He was very calm. Mm-hmm. Very, very calm in that fight. It seemed like he had a little bit more, I won't say knowledge. But he, he Experience, him, innit? Yeah, he, 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 he accepted what was happening more than you. You were more yeah. like, a, like a bulldog. You were just running in. Again, like, that's what I mean. Like, I'm going, going, going. Because I've got a good engine. And that's where experience comes into then knowing when and when not to. And especially going 12 rounds, it's, it's, at, at that sort of fight, it, that was a fight, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Buckland was a boxing. <coughs> it was, a, you know, I mean, a, a box, and a box great. Cardo was a bit more of a fight, you know, you know yeah. the way he, he, he'll he sit back a bit and he'll draw you in and so you'll go in and, and you'll fight a little bit, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How old your youngest kid? They're all five. <laughs> Would you like to explain that? Is that possible? Yeah, it was just young... Triplets? Nah. <laughs> He's just a zedger. We've all got a mum each. <laughs> um, three kids? Three, three boys, mate, yeah. <laughs> three mums. <laughs> 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 uh, um, to be fair, it's not bad, bad. <laughs> no, that's, that's not that's only a couple of moments <laughs> five level of side teams isn't it? I think in this day and age it's accepted yeah you accepted do you know what I was just um, you, you did more just a young day. lad and yeah <laughs> I didn't tell you to get you back I know tomorrow it's going to be just as bad so I'm, yeah, taking, I'm taking my chances while I can now yeah I'll, I'll remember all this <laughs> <you really. laughs> phone Steve now where's my phone it's not going to happen mate no um, so when when was your when your kids were born? Yeah. When you were when you were all born. <laughs> <laughs> so when you were born and you were travelling to, to to see them. Yeah. At what point in your career? Where was you in your career then? At, at what point? Because um, look, let 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 be real. I'm gonna be real with you for a second because at what point, Masha Dodd, eh, over there was a professional boxer. Now. Yeah. Everyone wants to be Master Dodd's best mate, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. for what you've achieved, and that's yeah. how it works. No one gave me the, you give me the time <coughs> all point, day. No, you did. Nobody was interested, was he? He nah. wasn't getting the recognition that you deserved. Well, just even as a person, you know, um, you know, people wouldn't look, look look at you twice. Do you, you know? Now you open your mouth, people are listening. Yeah. People want to hear what you've got to say. People take notes. You know, back then, you, your words were worthless to anyone. You were a nobody. You were, you were, you. They're not interested in, in what you've got to say and what you've got to do. I'm still the same person. All there is now, I've just found something that I've, I've, I've achieved. Ah, you know, been, been good. Yeah. I've worked harder. And all of a sudden, everyone wants to listen to you. Everyone. What's your goal, Masha? What would you like? What would you like this? How would you like this to end? Obviously, I know you'd never like it to end. But how would you like this to finish up? What would, you know, if your career was to have to be retired in, in a few years, you know, what would you like to be doing after that? Well, I would, me personally, yeah. um, I don't know, you know. I mean, would you consider coaching? Obviously, you're going to be working on TV now, aren't you? You've just been yeah. given a bit of an offer. But, so. <laughs> you know, uh, the lot coming on. But what I mean is, where could you see yourself? Well, I see myself, you know, on the Bahamas, you know what I mean? That's where you always see you, see where you want to be, don't you? Chilling on a on a nice sunset beach and just... just Doing nothing and just chilling with all the family around you. Nice but, yeah, oh. but in, in in on that note, you know, just the, the serious note of like where you're going. But I, I always had plans of what I would like to do and what what you know what you want to want to be. But um, things just seem to be happening. Like opportunities seem to, you know, come about now. More doors are possibly can open. Um, as each day goes by, as the, the more. Of, the more you find out about yourself, the more you accept yourself, who you are, and be yourself. Um, I'm, you know, you say now radio, we're on radio shows, yeah, there's TV yeah. things, and so you we're know, I did, well. none of none of this was a thought. It was like you said before, it was more like you know, going to coaching, give a little bit back, you yeah. know, just give experience because you you were, were experience can't be bought and it can't be taught. It's only earned. 
And the only way you're in is by doing something what we what we're doing. Yeah. And um, Just and it's tough. Every day, yeah. yeah, you know you it, it is tough, but it's priceless to give back to kids. So. That's it. In the words of Chris Fish, go mate, embrace the grind. Yeah. Now you're a you're a, you're a massive follower of the secret, aren't you? Yeah. The secret, yeah. Is that how many times have you read that? Have you read it? Three times. But you've read it. Yeah, of course, yeah. How many you've read it? Of course, yeah. Ask me, ask me a question, question on the secret. I don't really know any other than what is the secret? It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> the secret, right? <guys. laughs> the secret. The, they call it the secret because. It was it was <clears throat> kept a secret from 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 everybody, yeah. and only the likes of like Einstein and and you know, Beethoven and you know all of these um, all these people that have like made it made it and you and you, the the names if yeah. if you say the names you'd be like wow them blah 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 well they were all aware of it and all it basically is it's the law of attraction yeah so it's like for instance you wake up in the morning and you get out of bed and you stump your toe. On, on the bed you're like oh, man. so then you're going to brush your teeth and toothpaste will fall off it's a, it manifests you're on a frequency then do you know what I mean law of attraction so you slump your toe you're, you're on that frequency you're fuck on your toe yeah, yeah. go and brush your teeth and the toothpaste will drop off or you you put on a paste and a, and a flick in your eye and you're like <laughs> you know what I mean it's like waking up in the morning and starting your, your, your day you start on a bad day, day it manifests you make a cup of tea and there's the, the water go over the tea out, out the cup or you know what I mean it just yeah you know, it just goes on and goes on and goes on until you sit down or something good happens or a good thought comes into your mind and then you stay in that thought then and then you just switch over to another frequency and that frequency is a good frequency. When you're on that good frequency, a happy frequency, good things, yeah, happen, yeah. Good things happen. If you're on a bad frequency, bad things will just keep happening. And, it, and trust me, it'll And a good way to do it, right, a good test, yeah, is for instance, you know, if you're driving, is if there's a car space, that like say you go somewhere every day literally I mean there's never there's car space there or sometimes there's sometimes there isn't depending on the day you're having it'll whether it'll be there or not because it's how you, you, your thoughts are manifesting so if you get up in the morning and start that day as a you know this is going to be a good day you're telling yourself this is going to be a good day be happy put some good music on that makes you happy think of people that you love that <coughs> makes you happy you know what I mean like your dogs your family so you go to work, you've got a parking space because you can say, okay, parking space, then you'll have a lovely day in work, you thought, yes, I want a good day in work, then you'll go home and your missus will be lying there with loads of lingerie on because... <laughs> yeah. Is this, is this you, you create it, mate, <laughs> right? You create it, you even like say, like, you want a cup of coffee and think about it on a good, on a, on a good frequency and, and I'm really, you know, you'll get that, I swear, it's sick. That happened to you last week, didn't it? You must have been thinking about a company. <laughs> and what you know what mate right I've only even got you know Come on, just, but just say. I was honest I, when I got up in the morning made a cup of coffee and when you know when you think like you can have something now you know, like toast or something yeah, like that yeah. and that's what I was thinking I'm figuring all that time up in the morning you cup of coffee and you're off but that's when you think oh you can have, can have something juicy now you know what I mean yeah, like yeah. load of butter on toast when we got there and I went something like I was thinking, thinking of. It was just something like, <clears> it's a <throat> thought. Oh, you know what I mean? Because you're always on that frequency. When we got in there, there was a nice juicy cup of there. You know, it, listen, it's sick. You When you tap into it, yeah, you're on it. It's sick. Well, I think I'm, I'm, in, I'm at one with all this positivity. I think when, positive things happen around me. I, I create things. No, when you become aware of it. I am the secret. When you, when, <laughs> yeah, when you become aware of it, you'll be... You'll be that's when you'll realise things when you're when you're aware of the, the law of it. Oh, I swear it's sick, mate. Well, let's let's get back to Pascal Di Dilvio. Silvio. The Silvio and yeah. his uh, lightweight WBC title was it? Yeah, the, yeah, WBC International. And that's what you snatched there off, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it was vacant. That's he, right. Yes, yeah. so it was a vacant title. That's correct. He yeah. was a world uh, level fighter. I mean, just uh, he he boxed for like a world <laughs> title and stuff, and um, got beat on points by this. I don't know his name, but he was a tough, hard man, you know, with a lot, a lot of stoppages. And De Silvio, I boxed him twice because the first one was quite close on a decision. Went all, you know, went, went all the way, boxed him again and went all the way. So De Silvio went, went the distance and twice. We knew he was a tough yeah. fella then. Even though people were saying he was an Italian. <laughs> and, you know, they were saying what the Italians. <laughs> <laughs> Just got the smallest war, war, war hero, war cavalry, so... 
And you won that belt. Yeah. And then you moved up with Lee Appleyard. No. You had a fight. Nah, I went, went, do you know what? After that, the Silvio, <clears throat> I went and defended it. Against Francesco Patera. Yeah, and Patera. I beat Patera. Patera and the Silvio went and boxed each other. Patera beat the Silvio on points. Patera then went and boxed with the European title and won the European title and mm. become European champion. And, and so we had two losses and then won the European title. Yeah, I beat him. Then he no, I beat him. Then he beat. The oh, right, right, who, right, I get you. Right, because they then fought each other, and then he he went and won the European. Yeah, that's when you fought Alpi. Then I went and fought Alpi. Then for the combo, yeah. Which then you had two wins in Antonio. Oh yeah, Antonio. Um, Hobato. 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 Oh, so I'm like that. was my first ever like um, Albanian type of fighter in a box. <laughs> the, um, no proper like. The, the big fight for you then was Tom Stoke and Mate Look. Yeah. To be fair, like right, that was that was great for the city that you know. Yeah. That was I, I remember. I he made that fight, fight as well. Give him credit to Tom. I don't think he's bolted because he was back and forth. And when yeah. that happens, well, I just play with it. I went on with it, but give <clears> full credit to him. He made it happen. You know what I mean? That was great. That I went to yeah. the press conference. Yeah, it was good, man. Yeah, and then you turned up late. It's weird. You turned up late again. Yeah, you watched as well. It was. You watched as well. It was on 10.5. So you turned and and then there was a... You just had a goal or something, didn't you? Yeah. You just had a pop. Genuine as well, mate. You were dressed up as a... A bow selector. But yeah, that's right. Because yeah. he called me him. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I want it now. Because he called me bow Because we were having, a, we were having a bit of banter and we're like... Hey, David, that, that, was, that was, was it. That was a great day. He said... Uh, and he said, you look like Bo Selector or something like that. Or, and, st- and I thought, you know, what's a good shout And I thought, <laughs> That's I, just, I just turned up with Bo Selector. I was like, Shamal. You only missing that? <laughs> Alakez. Yeah, yeah. And he was just like, damage his foot. Like, oh, you know what I mean? You've done him, mate. And you've done him in the ring. And as much as I like Tom Stalker, you did. You've done the job, mate. And it was yeah. a really good job. And then up step Tommy Coyle. Yeah. Which was your most recent. Yeah. And again... I like Tommy Coyle and Tommy Coyle's really good what he does and what he's what he's set up in Hull. I made him look amazing. great though, mate. But it wasn't you and nah. there was reasons for that. You know, if you want to talk about it, your dad. Yeah, you yeah, know. don't mind because we were, talk, we were talking with Nick, you know, about Tony Bellew and uh, his that situation. That was one of the greatest interviews I've seen Tony do. Yeah. And I don't know, I won't take it out your stride here, but that was probably one of the best interviews I've seen Tony do because he came from the showman and he went straight back to Tony and he showed the world mm-hmm. who he was as a man, as a yeah, father, as yeah. a family man. And that was the best interview I've ever seen. That was the most. It was real, wasn't it? Yeah, he, is, he is real. He puts on that, you know, you know, gives it all of that. He's got to, hasn't he? That's yeah, what he's that's what he's saying. You know successful because you've got haters. Yeah, and you've yeah. Got people, and, and he said that, that after the thing, you know, people were <clears> booing <throat> him and then they were cheering him afterwards. Yeah. But that was, that was him. He doesn't... Show you about his personal life. No. Do you know what I mean? But he tapped into his personal life there. You know, it, we it, all got a, a, a feel of it. He's him. got the respect for his wife, Rachel. Wife, yes. Did he get married? Wife to be. Wife to be, Rachel. Yeah. The, the respect he's got for that woman. All the fear, I don't know. You don't know, respect for you, don't yeah, you? Yeah, she's not that fair, is she? <laughs> No, but no, that was you know what, and that was probably one of the best Sony Bellews I've ever saw as well when he was in the ring. Yeah, fantastic. I, mean, I, I kept on going back to all the Twitter shouts and all the Facebook shouts from the previous fight. You know when they were all saying, "Ah, he got lucky, the hamster." Yeah, and this, yeah. That, and then they were deleted comments. Yeah, he was lucky that Bellew tried to blast him out when he did do his ankle. The fact that he survived so long. Because he, yeah, because he, he, he sort of you know punched himself out a little bit you know I know thought, because he seen opportunity and he thought I'll take him here. I honestly thought I mean I don't think many people will agree on me with this, but if you watch that fight correctly, right? Tony stepped back from him a lot. Yeah, he was tired. Yeah, he was gassed out. But it was like he knew he was hurt as well, and a kind of a bit of a heart kicked in a little bit because don't forget at one point he tried to give him his glove. And, and yeah. Say, no, Respect. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't. He tried to throw tried it, to. which embarrassed embarrassed Dave Day more. Yeah. And I I don't know if this is true. Only Tony will be able to tell us this. I heard. I'm not sure whether he heard it in an interview. But Tony was saying to him, "Dave, stop now. Done. Your, your legs are." Yeah, I think he and was. He was that same that too. Now, if he didn't give a fuck about the fella, yeah. he wouldn't have done that. He just kept on it. Yeah. But it, it was like he was he was saying, "Look, you've got to prove." 
Let's do it again. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. So again, that was that was the best Tony Blair I ever saw. Yeah, it was boss. I mm-hmm. enjoyed it. I only watched it last night. I only caught up on it all last night, and I said I I haven't um, when when I was on a Friday, my mum's birthday. I was in bed all day Saturday, hungover. My head was pounding. Because I was on the mic killing it. <laughs> I, and it was, you know, the karaoke and the speakers and all that, my head was just booming, mate. So uh, Saturday was just a no no show. Yeah. So Sunday, I went to caravan with all the kids and the dogs, Sunday and Monday, and stayed off social media. Don't, don't go on anyway. Stay off my phone, so don't go on anyway, as you know. Well, makes- so I just turned it all off and then just start, like, started catch, catching up like late Monday nights and Tuesday. Do you know we bought your phone? <laughs> just for me. I'm going to give it to you tomorrow give you the phone <laughs> let's get back to your dad now in, yeah. in, 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 in you know respect to your dad because he is a massive part of your life and um, you had to go into that fight not knowing what way it was going to go because you know he was in hospital it was cancer was it cancer yeah no do you know what it was it was two days before the fight I, the, the whole camp was was basically his camp like, I was training every day and physically was in the best shape of my life. Sparring, I all the lads who were sparred with us, the coaches, about me training um, and the lads in the gym. You know, I was, it was, I was flying. Yeah. Everything was, everything was, because I was, t- you know, training each day for the day. And my dad, and then after training, I'd go and see my dad and we were helping him with his diet. He even moved out, so we even had to then move all his stuff um, to another house so it made it a bit easier you know for when he did go to hospital and when he when he when he come out it was he was closer um, and things would be easier there was a yard for the dogs and stuff like that I didn't have a yard where he was originally and there was too many stairs so um, so we moved out and we helped him with his diet and all that and, and we're going up checking if he needed anything just staying with him making sure he was okay because you know he he's a proud man yeah, and he course. went from a you know, from a, you know, you know, the big strong man to, you know, a frail, with it just like that, you know what I mean? He went to a frail and, and his pride was just like dented, you know what I mean? Like, you know, he, you know, he's, he, you know, we used to fear me dad. And then you look at him and think, Fuck, you know, I, I can pick him up and carry him to bed. Yeah, in a sense, yeah. you know what I mean? He got weak and it was, wasn't nice for us to see, but he knew that it, he, he knew how, it probably looked towards him. He didn't, you know. It just killed him. He could, he could feel his pain, not the pain, the like pain, pain, but the pain, just from not being a man that he, of course, he, yeah, he, you know, he was. And it's hard pill to swallow, isn't it? Yeah. So it was a, it was an emotional roller coaster. He was in and out of hospital for, you know, checks and tests, and then he went in for the big operation. Then, um, and he, come out of hospital on a Thursday, two days before the fight. And always, like we said about the secret, in camp each fight, always I think about is obviously my opponent, the results of the fight. I vision, this is, this is what you do, you don't vision the fight, you vision the outcome. You put a picture in your head of you basically celebrating, and how are you going to do your celebrate, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and a course. stalker, me and my mate were messing about the camp before we went into camp, and I was doing this Keith Lemon dance. So I said, <laughs> yeah, so I, my vision was, after I beat Stalker, was, I'm gonna, all my vision was me doing that dance, celebrating, yeah. and that's what I'd done. Yeah. After that, I won that fight, I'd do done the dance. The it dance? Just, yeah, I'd done it, because that's all I was thinking about doing, not thinking yeah. about how, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was thinking about how it was going to go, like how, how, how it would all be. It was, I'm going to win, I don't know how I'm going to win, I'm going to win, and, and that's going to be my celebration. You always pitch at the end picture so that's all I've done with this fight this camp was just all I was thinking about obviously was my dad being at home being being okay coming through it you know yeah he first had to go in this is what he said he, he's gonna have to go in for chemo shrink the tumor then he's gonna go in for an operation they're gonna have to cut most of it out as they can then he had to go back in and get more chemo to shrink the rest and radiation and then as time went by, because I was drilling his diet into him, um, you know, all the family, everyone was all mucking in and, you know, keeping on him. 
Rossi, Rossi, my mate, who's like yeah. a you know food man, and here we are going on the vegan and stuff like that. He's bang on. I got on that Rick Simpson oil. Okay. Yeah. The DMT, you know, we were just having it. I was, you know, we, we were loving it. <laughs> so he was just having it. Stoned. Yeah, stoned out of his head. <laughs> Loved it. Brought back, you know, me and back, back in the day. Yeah, he used to have a chunk with dad years ago. <laughs> but, so, yeah, he was, um, so we, we were doing all that anyway. And then as we got to like, so when we went back for test and test, they were like, and we checked on them, they were like, wow, it's, it's sort of sunk and it's been contained. So it was like, you're not going to need chemo first off. Well, just just be operation and then chemo afterwards, and then he went and then when he went back again, went in for the operation. He cut it all out, got the tumor out, and he said though he may need a cavity bag. Yeah, didn't get that. I'm not so always. I was thinking through the fight was he's gonna be fine. He's gonna be okay. They're gonna cut it all out, and that'll be it. You have no bag, and do you know what? He come home on a Thursday. I just didn't see him because obviously. Couldn't go to the hospital in case it caused any sort of infection, you know, when you go to hospitals and all. You yeah. Keep, so I couldn't see him for like two weeks. I was with him like nearly every day for the whole camp. And then like two weeks before the fight, and when he was going into hospital and stuff, I couldn't see him. And and like I, I knew he was sort of like diminishing in, in a man himself. And I didn't, you don't know in the back of your mind, is he going to even come out of hospital? And if he does come out of hospital, is he gonna be the man he was before he went in? Yeah, so, of course, yeah. And I never really had a relationship with my dad years ago when we were kids, and then only over all of his, you know, the last couple of years, we he's we've he's come home because he used to work away a lot. We started to really bond, and and you know what I mean, and I started to get that bond with him, and, and the next thing this happened, you know, so yeah, it was yeah. like the trials and the tribulations are nice. Yeah, it? it was all of one mate, and uh, it, was, it was it was hard, and he come out of hospital, I. Um, and he was and he was sound. And when I got that phone call on Thursday, it's the first time that you know broke down in tears of of joy. Tears yeah. of joy was like we done it, and that was that was that was the fight in me. Won. Do you yeah, know what I mean? It was yeah. like we done it, and and that was it. You know what I mean? I was like all I wanted to do was go and see him, but he had to go and carry on with the fight, which had done everything. The weight was bang on. You know when it. Well, and then obviously I was basically got in the ring and I just wasn't there. You know what I mean? There was yeah. nothing in me, mate. There was no fight in me. It was, it was terrible. It's one of the things, isn't it, though? Do you know? I mean, you're looking on retaining this belt. Is this what you're chasing? We had the rematch clause put in anyway. Luckily enough, because I was like, we, we, they said that would stalker the rematch clause in, but it was like, we won't need the rematch. We won't yeah. need it, trust me. And the same was with Tommy Coyle. But uh, I don't they, know. They, but they put it in. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And luckily enough, they did. I don't know where I'm at with Tommy Coyle and a rematch. My honest opinion is, I think he's going to retire. I believe he is as now, well. If he did, he would retire a, a, a well, yeah, a well, he's, he's, a well thought man. He's done, he's done a lot. He's, yeah. he's accomplished a lot, and what he's done in Hull is massively. To be yeah, fair, he's an amazing man, mate. Yeah, he's, he's 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 a really really good lad, and I think his achievements are that good that he could end on a high. Yeah, and and if I was him, I would. But I'm not him. The I, doors I, always I, open I, here for you. I want to end on a high. Yeah, you think about yourself. The doors always you? open because yeah. one, you've got the rematch if he doesn't. Mm. Two, you 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 first up there, aren't you? Yeah, because it's vacant, vacant and we can go. Up and, yeah, I think, and this is what I think is going to happen. Oh, I think you know I you. think Tom Stalker is going to fight you for that vacant title. That would be good. That's what I think is going to happen. That would be good because you know. Because I know that he wants his rematch also. Well, does he? Well, of course. He's a fighter. That's what yeah. fighters want, isn't it? If you yeah, want to beat the person you lost them. Yeah. Yes, I mean, so there's, there's endless opportunities out there. So I'm putting that out there now. That's what I think is going to happen. Yeah. Well, your your uh, your team, your coach, what's his name? Your Danny Kelly. Your, yeah, your coach, 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 Danny Kelly. How do they, how have they been with your current situation? How are they now? What are they starting to approach now? Because look, every, every team... Has a plan. Yeah. So there's got to be a plan. What are you? What is your well, plan? And what are they planning? What are they saying? Well, apparently, you know, because it's not rest day no more, is it? No, I'm waiting for Steve to uh, Steve Woods, my manager, yeah, to give us a day so we can go and see him and speak. Because I, I meant I spoke to Steve like you know last week and said to him, you know, what's going on? We we were talking about you know getting your wages and stuff, and I was like, I want the rematch with 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 Tommy, because he's his manager as well. What's going on? Can you sort it out for us? 
And then he was like, you know, we'll have a little meeting next week and we'll sort we'll, we'll see where we are. And I'm giving a bit of time to speak to Tommy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then Tommy texts me, which is, you know, asking how my old fella was and hope everything's all right and stuff like that, which was good of him. And then, um, and then I was like, sound and all that, blah, blah. And then I said to him, then, what's happening? When's the, when's this home? When's the homecoming and hope? And he never replied, you know what I mean? I just thought. So it seems to be like they're being avoided, the answer I'm looking for. Can't book, can't I? Close, close. But, you know, well, that's it. If he retires, he retires. But if he doesn't, then hopefully I get the, you know, the call, the closures in there. Let's move away from boxing. Okay. Let's talk about something that you've just started. Scoop dog. Scoop dog. We don't move on our way in there. I've seen the van go past. <laughs> Did that's you the first time I've seen it on Did the you road. See? No, because you were talking, I didn't want to say to him. This is my name. Yeah, this scoop dog. You know what I mean? What's scoop dog, mate? Scoop dog. Time, time, time. Scoop dog, sick. <laughs> Can I explain he's, what he's I He's cleaning do? the streets up as what you're doing. Did you get a uh, council company? Did you get a council? Did, have you got a... My mate Crawford, he's it? been sorting everything like he's been doing. I was, I was, I was contract, been, sorry. Yeah. And is that what you're looking for, a contract? That's what we're looking for, so yeah. explain what is it, what is it you do? It, well, it's just going round. Um, you know, you're a massive we're, animal man, are you? You yeah. love animals. And, and, and I used to have seven dogs at once, one time. And I clean up after my dogs, you know what I mean? And, and you know, I look after them and, you know, clean up after them. And then you come out your house, you know what I mean? You'll see, like, you know, where is it, dog shite? Mm-hmm. On want. the floor. And I'll be like, who the fuck was that? You know, and then you think, pick your shite up. <laughs> because, it's, you know what I mean? It's just, it's naughty, isn't it? No, it's all it's all it does me, I didn't make it, and then I... So what I mean is, because I've, I've been dying to ask, right, let me just picture the scenario. What? Right. The scenario is, I'm at home. Yeah. <laughs> the, the dog, I'm, I'm watching Collie, but I don't want to start watching Collie, because because obviously stuff's going on in David Platt's in a very tricky situation, and um, my dog's just out of shit. Yeah. Now, I can either press pause and com- completely ruin the whole show, or... Text you, pick up the dog shit, mate. Yeah. <laughs> the people come <laughs> out. <laughs> you just turn up in your van. Yeah. You clean the dog shit. And disinfect it. And you're like it. And then I'll go off. And that's it. Yeah. What would that cost me? Um, Not me. What would that cost a general punter? Oh, I don't know. You know, that's a, we've is got it, a website. Is there certain types of shit? <laughs> yeah, well, white chip brown shit sloppy white you know, dry you know, hard you know, dusty <laughs> it'll all get it'll all get cleaned up mate <laughs> is there a monthly contract how's it with there, there, there's there's like um, you know visits you know like a one off visit you know if you just want to just a little one off visit sound like an escort um, there's um, <laughs> there's like you know monthlies or I, they, do you know what my mate is he's, he's sorted everything like I've sort of forgotten a bit of, of, but it's all there on the website prices um, you getting this man and it's all it's all thing because you've got two dogs I mean, you yeah and dogs. It's, it's not just dogs it's animals as well you know what I mean so it's you know, you know people, animals uh, any sort of animals horses horses and that I mean, we may used to have horses as well and that was that's what he said but isn't horse the horseman you're good isn't that something you want to keep well I just thought <laughs> I, I'm going to get involved as well because I, I I like meeting dogs you know what I mean and I, said and I, 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 enjoy, yes. I enjoy it I said I was going to do this and I'm going to do it and I do mean what? that I am going Clean to form the company we've got the number get on us mate we've got our uniform the vans no, we'll we'll see the vans we're going to specifically ask that you do it I'm gonna start doing it. I've been I'm working for my man this week doing the driving to the laundress. But um my mates, so like next week, probably next week, going on Aldi the week after with the kids, but uh, me and my mum. <laughs> but the week ha- but uh, but I am gonna be getting I'm gonna be working with the lads. Because for obvious reasons having three kids to three different women, you're actually saying what them Yeah. <laughs> I don't want a kid. <laughs> I don't know, my mother killed me, mate. Trust me. <laughs> Look, my family, it's been absolutely fantastic having you here, lad. Thanks, Paul, mate. Thanks, it's an honour, mate. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Listen, before you go, um, as I say, we've got the, uh, the punch machine that we need to have a go at. Yeah, man. Look, this is going to be a little bit of a, um, a competition because I've never beat you on the quiz on when we work on the radio. Yeah, but you've got to beat me well, on that. No problem, problem mate. mate. We're going to let me and you go have a competition this time because I need to know one, whether I can beat you in anything. <laughs> okay. Other than quizzes. <laughs> and two, we'll put your score up anyway. You've got to show me, like, do you hook these or do you hit them straight? Yeah, fucking boxer. 
Yeah, but that, that, that's not a head move. I'm using it in moving targets. That don't move. I'm moving. No, I mean, like, I, I've seen people that I'm talking about, like, do they hit this? Come on, mate. There's got to be a little tip behind it, isn't there? Is there? I do all right. Just, you this go is, first. Hang on a minute. You Look at the last first. time we had a quiz. Now, this is, see this, right? The last time we had a quiz. <laughs> Tasha Jonas quiz. Yeah, I can give you the, and I, and I answered the question right, and then you mentioned, no, no, no. Katie Taylor. Katie Taylor. Yeah, that's Tasha Jonas. And I said Katie Taylor. Yeah. And then you it changed right. it because I thought, he's a boxer, he's going to help me out here. And I fucking got it wrong. <laughs> if you think I'm on track and I'm going to help you on this, I'm going to fucking But you can go first, mate, as you do. Let's do it. And then I'll watch. Mugs away. Mugs away. <laughs> let then. I don't know if you can go in case you take the head off. I got a pound point, I'll go. Yeah. 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 I don't know what my eyes was 860 off. Was it? He's been practicing, hasn't he? He's been whacking hell out of this. Crap. That was a good one. <laughs> Long jabber. Yeah. I'm more like, like, I'm going to say accuracy, like, <laughs> yeah, I'll probably miss this now, but I'll go too. What's your name, look? I'll go and go seven. Yeah, I don't mind. Come on, what do you think you get seven or something? Mash it up. You actually get two goals, you know what I mean? Just for yourself. Oh, yeah, another goal. You have another goal? Well, no, because I, I just want to throw it away. I'll take a left look. Do you want a left look? Yeah, I'll take a left look. You've got one, lads, then. There's only one, I've got a left one. Oh, no, well, I'll go right to get it, just in case. You're right handed. Yeah, no, but I've been back to South Korea. You need to win that goal, mate. Come on. I mean, that wasn't really a cancel, you know, but you just got... Was it? Yeah, what about it? Yeah, she, she can bang here, mate. You on it? Can't she? Oh, the hell she gets more than you. Ah, you don't know. B-Bobby! Oh, eight! Eight-oh-five, yeah, man! <laughs> it's nice. <laughs>